this is Kara Nicole, AZ Power Girl, and we're here this week for Nerds at the Roundtable at Dr. Fantasies over by Arrowhead Mall in, where are we, Dan? Are we in Phoenix or are we in Glendale? Glendale. We're, we're in Glendale. Glendale. Okay, this is one of those corner areas. So we're in Glendale, Arizona at Dr. Fantasies. Good corner of Glendale. It's a good question. Yes, it's a very good question. And that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us. So now we also have our special guest here, Spooky Kid Mickey Cheney, yep. who is a local artist and uh, has worked on some comic books locally. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Spooky. Uh, let's see, I've been drawing professionally for four years. Uh, I've been doing comics for about a year now, uh, and I'm going to start getting into the horror genres and make people vomit as much as possible. Absolutely. Well, I've awesome. seen some of your portrait work. You did yes. an amazing Edward Scissor hands, and you did a, uh, what was the Joker that you did? Cesar Romero's Joker. That's right, it was Cesar Romero's. Yes, yes I do portraits as well. And, and if you need to hire him for anything, I highly <laughs> recommend him. So uh, hit him up on Facebook. Yep. Spooky Kid or Mickey Cheney? Mickey Cheney. Mickey Cheney. Yep. Now we also have uh, our guest host here today. This is Kyle Rayner. Now, Kyle Rayner is Power Girl's best friend in the real world and in the comic book world. And he's going to be joining us here and there and possibly taking over for us a little bit, working on a few things. You're going to help me out, right? Just a few. Just a few. <laughs> Just when yourself. I really, really need him to. So, I'll uh, keep you hanging until the last moment. I want there to be some desperation. Yourself. Anything. Yes, I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Always is. Always Damn is. Okay, so first off, we're going to start with Huntress. DC's Huntress. We're on issue six. And, you know, one of the things that's been coming up lately is that women are being over-sexualized and exploited in comics. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can say that about any genre, but you see here, she's dressed less provocatively than she has been before. She, there's no midriff showing. I mean, there's definitely the, um, the form I think fitting. She looks great. She does look great. The colors are vibrant and beautiful. I'm very happy with the art. Storyline. I'm sorry, I gotta say, it's it a weak. little, it, it's weak. It was weak. It's very weak. Okay, yeah, you're giving women an opportunity to be in comics and show themselves, but for what? Well, what did you exactly think was lacking? There's no... I, I did look through the other issues because I, I didn't want to just look at this one. Huntress is supposed to be the daughter of Batman and Catwoman in the old universe. And in this one, we don't know who she is. She's obviously not their child. Who is she? Where is her backstory? She's in Italy. Okay, they gave her her own location. Awesome. But... I just wasn't really feeling it. It was a little bit of, okay, here's your little adventure, go on it. They did talk about sex trafficking. And Which is I, a big issue these days. It is, and I thought that was really interesting that they would have her be concerned about that with the conversations about the exploitation of mm -hmm. women in comic books. So are they using exploitation to exploit? Are they addressing a serious subject? Or are they using the the exploitation of women in comics along with the sex trafficking to cover up their exploitation and make them look like it's not so bad. I don't know. It All came off as a cheap insert to me because it wasn't even brought out throughout the, the issue. It was just like this quick line right at the end. Exactly. Well, quick line. There was no build-up. There was no theme going on. It was just a quick insert. And, and it, it went nowhere. Chocolate. Absolutely. If you want to do end. something with sex trafficking, they should throw in like a little bit of a Taken element into that. Who saw oh, that I movie? loved that yes. movie. That was yes. a great movie. Now, if they threw something like that into it, that they'll would try be... to just get their asses kicked. By Batman. Yeah. Well, like, right. That would have brought yeah. in her backstory. So, yeah, it really didn't go anywhere, but I did have to choose this because we <laughs> have the introduction of Power Girl. <clears throat> they don't say it. They say her name, Kara. They... They show her. We all know this is Power Girl. We all know that Power Girl and Huntress uh, were very close friends like in the BFFs. old universe. Like BFFs. Um, and she is flying with her. And she does go into mentioning uh, star travel or something along those lines. And we all know Karen Star is 
Power Girls human persona. So, gotta give a plug there. Um, digging the new the new look of her so far. You should have brought the picture of you and Huntress hugging as proof that you guys were actually friends. So, that's it for DC's Huntress. Anyone got anything to add? I think you pretty much covered it. All right, moving on. Now, Danica, what did you choose for us? Oh, I chose Toy Story. It yes. Is one of my favorite <laughs> movies of all time. Um, what I liked about the comic was it didn't interfere with any of the movies, and I think parents could come in, first-time readers, and just pick it up off the shelf and say, my kid will like this. And I think that's, that's really appealing to most parents who are trying to get these kids to read these days. So... Now, this is a uh, number one in a four-part special. Yes. And, you know, as we discussed earlier, I think that you're right. It kind of is something in between the first movie and the second movie. It's a lot of fun, yes. Um, you don't want to give anything away, but it, it's, no. it's quite fun. Uh, I think kids will love it. Um, I have two little sisters at home. I think they would go nuts for it. So. Well, it was an adorable little adventure. They do give a little bit of backstory at the beginning. It answers back a question I've always had. Your question? Woody's relationship with Buster. Right. With yes. the dog. It yes. goes into that instead of just showing it for a little bit like it did in the movie. Mm -hmm. Well, that was really adorable. Well, now your life's complete. Yeah. No, not quite. Yeah. It won't be complete until I read the other four. <laughs> the other three. I agree. Or oh, three. I'm sorry. It's a four part. Okay. Mickey, you got anything to add? Uh, I don't even know if it would have to just be four kids. I mean, it's definitely a plus for the child audiences, but I mean, anybody that just want something easy to read that anyone who's a fan it doesn't have to be like this huge build-up story you have to follow 20 issues to get the curve done with a little four-part series just something fun to read that I mean, you don't have to put time into you can just relax oh, and so that's what read it. cool you know yeah yeah something like that i don't think it even just has to just be kids it's just an easier read a great time definitely yeah. Yeah. yeah i'll be interested to see if they follow up with a story or if it's a new completely different story for the next one i don't think dun, they would dun. let's yeah. find out no. <laughs> all right mickey what did you choose all right so i've got vampirella versus dracula here this is number two i believe and ultimately, I was actually very disappointed in everything. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, the artwork was hit or miss on each page, sometimes within each panel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's obviously an adult story. There's a lot of sexuality involved, no real nudity or anything. But they couldn't even go far in the gore. They just kept it very simple in red splashes. I mean, if you can have the sexuality, why not have... A little more of the violence brought out. Uh, the writing was adequate. Okay. <laughs> uh, it kind of, with the setting, you know, it's an older setting and everything, so they have some of the classical dialogue set up, but then it also goes into a modern style setup. And it's I very noticed broken. that. It's very broken. I did notice that. Like at the beginning here, the. Uh They've got kind of this calligraphy, cursive writing. Well, not just the font, but the actual And then writing. now it goes yeah. into, yeah. Well, now yeah. this bothered me. I'll show you this right here. This bothered me. I have breasts, I have a heart. And if you stabbed me there, <laughs> you would not hit it. They put that sword right between her boobs. Mm -hmm. They'd actually have to go through one of them to get to her heart. There you go. Yeah. yeah. But then it would hit the breast oh, yeah. implant, yeah, I mean, and there's, there's just so we'd much have a mess there. on it's our just, hands. Yeah, it'd so. spill all over the it'd place. Spill up all over the place. Yeah. I mean, they tried to. She it, could get an infection. <laughs> well, at that point, I think she. Uh, I think she's not afraid of infection. No, no. I, the, there's no infection. They swabbed the part before they stabbed her. Oh, okay. okay. Good. Well, I mean, like it seems like they wanted to do a dark horror story. But in the end, they took a dark horror genre and character and made a comic story out of it. It's very... They just didn't execute it's very it quite right. bland. Yeah. I mean, One of the things that I all, that always bothers me... So you're going to tell done. us who won, or do we have to buy yeah. the book? I don't know who won. Not much happened in the issue. I mean, it's still... Like, it's not even build up. It's just It was more just like rambling. Okay. Okay. It was, it was a filler issue, I found. I mean, there was not really anything like I would... That's a few pretty even... pictures. There's a couple. <laughs> so you said this is number two uh, from Dynamite, Vampirella mm -hmm. versus Dracula. I don't like the verses. I've never liked that. I, I've Such a personally, I would, in real life, I would love to see Vampirella go up 
against Dracula. Yes, but come up with a different title besides Versus. It's just so well, cheesy. Well, it's not even the first no. vampire, or Vampirella. Vampirella versus Dracula. It's not even the first time they've had that mashup. But in Vampirella? Yeah, they've had Vampirella versus Dracula many times, and this was just disappointing. Okay. Overall. I don't know why, but what comes to mind right now is Vampirella should be sometime in the future an unlockable character in a Castlevania game. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yes. Awesome. Okay. On to <laughs> you, Kyle. I that, we gained something from the book. <laughs> what did you choose? I chose Red Lanterns. And here's that versus you hate so much. <laughs> Green Lanterns. <laughs> um, this is issue number seven. I like this one right here. Guy Gardner. Which is really strange. You know, Guy Gardner fighting a Red Lantern and him letting him survive. Or Guy Gardner even being green in the first place. Um, this one is pretty cool. Apparently what is going on now in the universe as we all know, Sinestro Core isn't Sinestro Core anymore because Sinestro was chosen by one of the Green Rings. And so now he's going around killing the rest of his team. Um, apparently the, rest, the survivors of his team, without their power rings, get attacked by Red Lanterns. And, you know, they have no way to fight them off after that point. I like this one. Guy Gardner was the only Green Lantern. We don't see Sinestro, but we know that he's hunting the rest of the Yellows. And then it goes into more of the backstory of the Red Lanterns, their founder, why he's so angry. And then it mentions Blue Lanterns, even though none of them are in, it, in uh, this issue, which means that they're going to bring together the entire emotional spectrum in the near future. At least I hope so, because I like when they do that. Bad things happen when they do that. Awesome. Anyone? Any opinions? Any thoughts? Uh, personally, I think Red Lantern is my, one of my favorite ones. Okay. Um, yeah. I like that he is misunderstood rather than just evil. Okay. Rather than just being a bad guy for the sake of it. Right. Yeah. I mean, he didn't just wake up one morning and, and just be like, I'm going to be the most evil guy in the world. It's like, he, he actually just gets had up, to brushes have... his teeth, and he was like, I do what I want. You know, just yeah, like, <laughs> pretty much. Well, starts no. attacking people. Ah, uh, Mickey. What do you yeah. think of the art? Yeah, there we yeah. go. The main thing I focused on was the art, actually. I just kind of skimmed through the story and everything else, but the art I paid attention to. Some of it I was impressed by, mainly the uh, full-page panels and everything. Uh, some of the smaller panels were disappointing as well. Uh, not really anything altering for the I don't the like how the world. smaller ones kind of lapped each other. Yeah. Because there was too much border. Like, they didn't put enough picture in some of the pages. Yeah, some, like, some of the smaller panels just suffered. Uh, but the bigger panels, I mean, it's definitely good. I mean, like I said, it's nothing really game-changing for the comic scene. Uh, but, I mean, they definitely have interesting enough characters that they can really play with them and have a good time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, there's so many lanterns, they really have a lot of places to go. And you can pick and choose where you want to go based on... There's that one How, yeah. you know, based on who's wanting, based on your audience who's wanting to see it at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you, Kyle. And uh, one of the things that I thought was really interesting, I saw it. This caught my eye. I wasn't going to pick it up, but just kept dragging, drag, grabbing me. What is it? Sweet Tooth. We all have one of those. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, okay. And Wicked this is a new Vertigo book. And it looks very childish. It does. But it's not. Mm -mm. This no. is brutal. Yeah. This is awesome. It's brutal. That style kind of looks like Calvin and Hobbes. It kind of does. It's exactly what I thought too. Yeah. And I like that the it's it's kind of a newsprint type of uh, type of paper in here. Does it smell like newsprint? Yes, it does. Smell so like it that. almost it really could be Calvin and Hobbes if it wasn't so dark. I like it's this. very dark. Oh, it is not paper. Calvin and Hobbes. Do yeah. not give this to your child. Uh, they did give a little bit of backstory. This is going to be one where rather than having an entire backstory and being bored for a few issues and then going into it, they develop the backstory with the story. Um, Are they doing it through flashbacks? Uh, no, they're doing it more through verbiage and discussion. Hey, you remember that time? It, yeah. It's definitely okay. a dialogue-driven book. It's definitely, I have to agree. Uh, there's... You know, there's these weird kids with these weird faces, and it seems, I don't know for sure, some sort of, like, medical apocalypse. So I don't know if it's a viral contagion or something, but at some point, something happened that created people to look this way. Either that or maybe they always did. But that's what was the destruction and the downfall of the world. You got this guy trying to save his kids, and his kid's pretty creepy looking. 
So <laughs> that's kind of where we are with that. I definitely recommend pick it up. It's worth looking at. I love the art. Spooky. Yeah, Real I like quick. the art because of its simplicity. It doesn't distract from all the dialogue. Okay. Awesome. That way well, you can actually get the story. Nice. All right. Well, that's about all the time we have here at Nerds of the Round Table. Thank you, Danica, so much for letting us come to your store. Anytime. And uh, thank you, Mickey. Find us all on Facebook. <laughs> Kyle, thank you so much for being here. You're going to see Kyle around a little bit more. Absolutely. And uh, we hope to see you all soon. I am Danica from Dr. Fantasy's Comics, located at 75th and Bell, and we are an Avengers store for the Avengers vs. X-Men, so come see us for the Avengers variant covers when Avengers vs. X-Men comes out.